Hello everyone, I'm excited to show you today one of the most important things that we made in the past couple of months, which is zero speed full torque sensorless algorithm. That is a type of a sensorless algorithm that allows you to have a very good motion for the motor at the very low speed. So, uh, and that's why we call it zero speed full torque. So the biggest difference is in these kind of algorithms, you don't need to have any startup, and the, the whole algorithm is running in closed loop fashion, and it can be used for traction systems. So we have two types of algorithms, but this one especially needs motors with saliency. And uh, by that, we mean a difference between the inductance on the D and Q axis, but as a rule of thumb, usually the motors with the, uh, like outrunner motors like this one, BLC motors, or internal pegman magnet synchronous motors, which are called IPMSM, they, they do have saliency. And, uh, and this algorithm is useful for those type of motors. Here today, I'm gonna show you how you can actually use it on solo for something like this one. And uh, here I'm having a motor, Altrana motor, at 24 volt, using a Solo Uno, 32 amp version of it. And uh, as you can see, the only thing that is connected from the motor to Solo is the phase wires of the motor. And the order actually doesn't matter at this point. So the connection is just that. Now I'm gonna connect it to the uh, power supply and the USB and use motion terminal and drive this motor in that condition. Okay, so to start working with this algorithm, which is a little bit, might be looking sophisticated in the beginning, but once you learn it, it's not that sophisticated. You need to get connected to motion terminal. And here I can see motion terminal detecting my unit and also the, the firmware version. If I go to action section, initially what I need to make sure is the, uh, the fact that the current limit is suitable for this motor. So 20 amps is very good for this motor. For this algorithm, for the zero speed full torque, we recommend to stay at 20 kilohertz in any case. So the frequency is 20 kilohertz. Regeneration current limit is just to limiting the current that you send back from the motor to the supply. So it's not good to re reduce it back to zero because if you reduce the dynamic performance of the drive, but you can reduce it if you're not using a battery system to some number that doesn't cause the rise of the bus voltage. So here five amps for me is good. Another important thing is the number of poles of the motor. This motor has 14 poles that we can see here. And the motor type, which is the final parameter that we set in, the, in this part of the system is kind of depending on the nominal speed of this motor. So the nominal speed of this motor is actually 3000 RPM. And the motor type of BLC PMSM is okay for motors in between uh, uh, below 3000 RPM. So, so it's okay because if you have a motor with higher speed, especially above 3,000 RPM, you can switch to ultra fast type. So it allows you to go even to 30,000 or even more. And, uh, and for this part of motion terminal, we are done. So if I go down, the next thing to do is making sure the motor identification is at least done once. So I've done it before, I don't need to repeat it. And, uh, and then the next thing is to make sure you are at feedback control mode sensorless zero speed. So this is the first release of this algorithm. The version is shown here. And once you select that, you see a panel appearing here called sensors and sensorless calibration. So you see four different parameters. The detail of these parameters are gonna be in the link below in, inside an article. I, I'm not gonna go too deep in them. But the most important part is actually these two parameters, which is transition speed and the injection amplitude. So this algorithm injects some pulses into the motor and identifies how is the situation in the motor, the position of the motor, and then from that, it will drive the motor. So this injection amplitude, which is a number between zero to one, defines how much should be the magnitude of the injection. So you don't need to increase it much. Usually a number between 15 to 25 works for most of the motors. And that's why we select 25 here. And then there is a transition speed which is uh, going from the zero speed algorithm to the algorithm that is uh, for higher speed. So this is this part. The only limitation is the zero speed algorithm doesn't work for high speed operation. So here, this transition speed usually should be some number below 300, 400 RPM. So before you reach to 400 RPM, you need to kind of go to high speed algorithm. So 
I have set 250 RPM for this part and the injection is good. I'm in a speed mode, here I can see. And I have set the speed controller KP and KI to 0.6 for KP and KI 0.005. These are two numbers that you can tune during the application. But for now I've tuned it. And the last part is the acceleration and deceleration parameters. These are very important for this algorithm. So it's good to have some numbers, non-zero numbers here, for instance, you can have 10 revolution per square second, 20 revolution per square second, or even more. But these are pretty fast accelerations, by the way, so it's very important to have them here. And now we want to drive the system in a zero speed, so I'm gonna go to 50 RPM to start up. The motor starts to move. And the interesting part is this, if, if I put my hand here as a load and set the 50 RPM, it will start even at such a high load. So, it's like a sensor. Then I go to uh, 100 RPM. And uh, I can go to 1000 RPM. As soon as I go to 1000 RPM, the noise disappears because I pass the transition speed. So this is useful for applications that you want to go from very low speed and high torque on the motor to higher speed applications. And here, if I can, go, I can go even to 2,000 RPM or more. Um, or even go back to 1,000. So that's it. Thank you.